Over the last few days, more and more Pokemon information has been coming out, in the form of leaks. A lot of it from the now historic Pokemon Terra leak, which we discussed in some detail a few days ago, but more and more information has been coming out. We've been learning about a whole bunch of different things, not so finalized lore details, cut content, beta sprites for multiple generations, Pokemon anime and movie plans, internal conversations, and information about upcoming Pokemon projects, such as Generation 10, this codename Synapse Project, and yes, also, Legends ZA. And even more has come out about Pokemon Legends ZA, which is what we will be focusing on today. But it's not just leaks from the Terra League, but also this user on Twitter known as Riddler Koo, who we've also discussed in the past. But thanks to the Terra League, which is verified and we know to be real information that they definitely do not want out there, Game Freak has already provided a statement on this. It's been confirmed that these leaks are legitimate. But thanks to some of these leaks, we now know about things that Riddler Crew has talked about that are also true, which is adding even more reason to believe the things that Riddler talks about. And there are things that the Riddler is talking about regarding Legend ZA that are also new that are very exciting. So that's what we're getting into today on Andres Restart. And here's a brief message about today's sponsor, Ecostash. Ecostash has gone ahead and provided to me an accordion file organizer. It has plenty of pockets, labels, it's made out of wheat straw, so it's completely eco-friendly, and it's totally sturdy, and it's really great for fitting all of your documents into a neat, compact space. If this is something that interests you, check the link in the description below or in the comments, and make sure to not only click the 10% coupon on Amazon, but to put the coupon code in the payment gift card promo section to get an additional 15% off for a total of 25. Thank you to Ecostash for sponsoring today's video. Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart, and we're getting right into this here, but I would like to point out that we're going to be jumping back and forth between Riddler Coup leaks and Terra leaks, because they do relate to each other. So, for example, We've already discussed how there are anime plans for both Mega Zygarde and Mega Zeraora. Both of these Pokemon are going to be getting Mega Evolutions. Now, we know this is related to Pokemon Legends ZA because they've essentially confirmed to us that Mega Evolutions are returning. Now, of course, a lot of us believe that Zygarde is going to be playing a very important role to the story. Zygarde was considered to be the Z equivalent to the X and Y legendary Pokemons from Generation 6, X and Y. X being Xerneas, Y being Eveltal. And so with Pokemon Legend ZA with the Z, there has been certainly a thought that we'll be seeing something significant about Zygarde here. And even with the logo, it seems to be heavily hinted at there with all the cell-like designs. But what's extra interesting about the leaks for these two Mega Evolutions is that the Riddler on Twitter was hinting at this back on May 16th. Here, he says, your ZA game is coming, and then shows Zeraora and Zygarde. And who are the two Mega Evolutions we learned about in the recent Terra leak? These two Pokemon. Now, this is interesting for multiple reasons. One, it adds more credibility to the Riddler, which many people have been doubting this last year because we didn't get to see a Generation 5 remake announcement from the Pokemon Presents, which there appeared to be a lot of smoke for. But here, this is something that is very blatant and specific. Why Zeraora? Why Zygarde? My take? They also have had access to this information. They are privy to the conversations or whatever is going on in terms of the anime discussions for Mega Zygarde and Mega Zeraora. Now, this information alone is perhaps not that exciting because, okay, sure, Mega Zeraora and Mega Zygarde are coming, but it gives us more reason to trust the Riddler. And it should also be pointed out that the Riddler has talked about Project Ikaku as Pokemon Legends ZA, and we have learned that, yes, that is the code name for Pokemon Legends ZA, so it's even more reason to believe this person. So with that said, let's now check out something they said very recently about Legends ZA. Well, Ikaku art style looks similar to Titan. For those that don't know, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, its codename, is Titan. So, Legend ZA looks similar to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And this is kind of surprising, 
because I kind of operated under the assumption that this game would look very similar to Legends Arceus. Legends Arceus has more of a cell shaded look compared to Scarlet and Violet, but Scarlet and Violet is technically a newer game. Now, it's a little bit more ambitious with its scope, so there are certainly things that don't look as good as Legends Arceus, but something that is improved on in Scarlet and Violet that I do appreciate is that most of the Pokemon models have a lot more textures. You can see scales and fur that you could not see in Legends Arceus or prior Pokemon games. And I think this is a reasonable expectation because as time goes on, Creatures continues to update the Pokemon models and Pokemon Company and Game Freak and all, they continue to use the more up-to-date models at least when it fits. And so since they've updated the models, it makes sense that they would use the better looking, more detailed textured Pokemon models. But perhaps this goes beyond just the Pokemon themselves, but the environment. I would assume so, because they're talking about the art style, and they're not mentioning specifically just the Pokemon. And I will say that I do like the art style for Scarlet and Violet. I do kind of get the sense that it in some ways matches a little bit more closely to the anime. Not exactly, it's not cell shaded but there is this very vibrant look. And I'm very curious how this might work with Legend ZA, a game that I assume won't be open world, but more like Legends Arceus, so perhaps a little bit easier to pull off a better running version. And also, since this is their second foray into this format and they've been spending more time on it, it's likely to be even more polished. So Legend ZA has a fantastic chance to be the best looking Pokemon game to date, taking the good things from Scarlet and Violet, but also the good things from Arceus and building upon it. Before we continue on though, let me quickly ask that if you do enjoy my content, to please subscribe and hit that notification bell. But with visuals in mind, I think I should now talk about this possibility that more of the game may get out there, as in we may see a playable build. There is a lot of talk that there is a playable build out there for Legend ZA, and personally I really hope this doesn't get out there, I don't want the entire game leaked. It's interesting when we get little details here and there because that's just like small pieces to the overall puzzle and that's fun conversation. But once the entire game leaked, that's not at all beneficial to the developers, the company, and it kind of takes the fun out of it, in my opinion. Also, that's not something I would cover because there would definitely be strikes and takedowns. But so far, what we've understood is that it's just a leaker themselves that has a playable build. And they say that the game is actually very enjoyable, even with the lag. And that they're not planning to release any more details about the game. And nothing has come out in the last couple days about Legends ZA from this leak, but we have learned details from the Riddler as we've been discussing. Now, hearing that the game is very enjoyable is certainly great to hear, but there's also a mention of there being lag. But what should be noted is that we've learned that apparently there was a build of this game before the Pokemon Presents that announced it February of this year. And so presumably that's the version that they're playing right now, and even if it's not that version, even if it's an even more up-to-date version today, this game is not coming out this year, it's coming out sometime next year. So I really don't think we should be judging this negatively in any way, because unfinalized, unfinished builds of a game over a year before release probably will have lag or other issues. We should be concerned once they start showing us significant footage. And even when they start showing us significant footage, we've seen plenty of examples where they show off a trailer of the game with gameplay, and it's still not a final build, so the game's not running as well as it will by the time it comes out. So, we're not even at the point where they're showing us footage, and we're hearing about a version from months back that had some lag. I'm not worried yet. And yet, despite this lag for this very unfinished version, the leakers saying that the game is very enjoyable. That's a good sign. And from the terror leaks, we did hear that the game was originally planned to release in 2024. And so it has me wondering why exactly did it move to 2025? And I have two different ideas on this. The first idea is simply to make sure the game is of higher quality. Following all the controversy surrounding Scarlet and Violet and even its DLC, where there is a variety of performance issues and glitches, that still to this date remain, the image of both Nintendo and Pokemon were certainly somewhat impacted here. Now Nintendo's at fault because they perhaps aren't holding Game Freak and Pokemon Company as accountable, and 
Pokemon Game Freak are responsible because, well, they're responsible for the game and making it and putting it out there. So it may be the case that they pivoted internally to make sure they can ensure some quality and put out one last final huge Switch 1 game going into the next generation so the image is restored somewhat going into Generation 10 for Pokemon for the 30th anniversary in 2026. That's one thought I have on this. But I have another. I just mentioned the next generation, but I don't mean Gen 10. Yeah, that I think that's coming after Legend ZA, but I'm actually also referring to Nintendo Switch 2, which we believe will be coming out in 2025. I think there is also some reason to think that Legend ZA being delayed internally to 2025 is somehow tied to Switch 2. Now, from what we've seen of the leaks, there is zero indication that Legend ZA is being made also for Switch 2. We haven't seen any evidence of a Switch 2 build, just for Switch 1. But I'm not here necessarily trying to argue that Legend ZA is going to be a cross-gen title in the traditional sense like it was for Twilight Princess or Breath of the Wild, or as we think it will be for Prime 4. While we have entertained this idea of Legend ZA being a cross-gen title, the way I sort of see Legend ZA, it's a little different from how I think they'll handle Prime 4 when it comes to cross-gen versions for Switch 2. I think Legend ZA will be factored into the overall marketing campaign for Switch 2. It may not be touted as a Switch 2 game, but we do believe the Switch 2 will be backwards compatible, and thus you will be able to play Legend ZA on your Switch 2. And I think it should also be noted that we have seen in the past Pokemon games that come out that run better on newer versions of a Nintendo console. So a great example, Pokemon Sun and Moon. That game lagged quite a bit on the original 3DS, but on the new 3DS it ran significantly better. I wouldn't be surprised if it is talked about how Legend ZA just naturally runs better on the Nintendo Switch 2. And even though we haven't seen evidence of a Switch 2 build, that doesn't mean they can't still update the game a little bit afterwards. And I suppose I should also throw out the possibility that just because we haven't seen evidence of a Switch 2 build, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Of course, it's hard to bet on there being a Switch 2 build because we have no evidence, but I'm just saying, nothing's 100% certain yet. But with all this in mind, I think it's also interesting to go back to something else the Riddler said about Legend ZA that wasn't even that long ago. On October 1st, the Riddler said Ikaku soon, and then pre-odd, which I assume means pre-order. So I'm assuming the suggestion here is that pre-orders are going to go up for Pokemon Legend ZA, which strongly suggests that we're about to get a deluge of information about this game, which is perhaps why some people have been theorizing that we may have a Pokemon Presents announced for this month. But the thing about that is that there is no prior history of a Pokemon Presents happening this late into the year. We're already so close to February where we always get a Pokemon Presents essentially, I think it's pretty unlikely that we're getting a Pokemon presentation. But that doesn't mean that they can't just make an announcement about Legend ZA outside of a Presents. Perhaps they could just shadow drop a trailer, maybe with some pre-order details. This is certainly possible. And there is a lot of speculation right now that Switch 2 could be revealed in this month of October. With just a couple weeks left, they might handle it very similarly to how they handled the reveal for Switch 1 back in late October of 2016. And perhaps this reveal trailer could include information on Legend ZA. Now, as we just discussed, there's no significant evidence of there being a cross-gen version for Legend ZA, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't want to include it in the marketing campaign to some extent. So there could be something going on there. Now one last thing we're going to discuss here is that we have heard from the Terra Leak that Stunfisk is in the game. The leaker found the shiny Stunfisk during their gameplay and they have confirmed that the shiny appearance sound has come back from Pokemon Legends Arceus. And we've discussed this already. But what's perhaps more interesting is that when we consider where you find Stunfisk in Pokemon X and Y, it's on routes 14 and 19, and route 14 is just above Lumio City, where Legend ZA is supposedly taking place, it could have some implications in terms of the environment we're going to be exploring here. An expanded version of Lumio City that perhaps includes wild areas in the outskirts. 
areas that might be considered roots in X and Y, like Route 14. And I think this is kind of a reasonable thought to have because, well, I just have a hard time believing that the entire game is going to take place in just a normal city if Pokemon games are about catching Pokemon and most of the time Pokemon are in the wilderness, out about in nature. So I have to imagine they're going to be finding ways to blend in some of the nature and perhaps that includes the outskirts of Lumio City including a great deal of nature, where you might be able to find a shiny Stunfisk. But so far, that is the extent of the leaks regarding Pokemon Legends EA and what I think they might suggest. But what do you think? What do you make of all this information surrounding Pokemon Legends ZA? Let me know in the comments below. This is Andres Restart. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.